Hello, welcome to another geospatial tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize uh, in memory raster. Uh, for example, NumPy array, X array using a leaf map with just one line code. So uh, most of the time, if you're doing a raster data analysis, you're going to have some data either locally or in the cloud, and you're going to write some algorithm to process the data. For example, you can calculate the NDVI, uh, normalized different vegetation index and then you want to extract the vegetation or whatever you want and so you have some intermediate results and then you will usually have to save the result to your computer uh, as a GeoTIFF so that you can visualize that but that takes time so especially if you are dealing with a large data set uh, saving the data is going to take time so um, this video is going to help you because you can visualize the data in the memory without having to save it in the file and it can be very useful if you're dealing with the last data set. And this is a feature that I have been uh, thinking about for a while, a year or two. Um, and so I saw it was impossible. But now, um, thanks to uh, Rasta IO and also a local test server, I was able to make it work. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, head over to leafmap.org, the main uh, notebooks. Scroll down to find number 89, image array visualization. So in here, you can either click uh, to open in Google Collab uh, or whatever cloud environment you like. And then you can uncomment this one to install all the packages, leaf map, raster IO, or raster real, however you want to call it, and uh, real X-Array. So those are the three packages, and then just click run step by step. Um, you can also download this one to your computer uh, if you have uh, the package, uh, the uh, environment set up. So I'm going to download this one to my computer. And then I can open using uh, JupyterLab. So double click. And then you can run through the source code. So this is a pretty simple example. I'm going to show you two ways to visualize data. Uh, one is visualizing NumPy array. Uh, the next one is visualizing uh, X array uh, in the memory. So let's import the libraries, uh, including DiffMap, raster IO. Uh, let me restart the kernel first. Okay. And uh, raster IO, real X array, and also X array. Then we're going to download two sample data sets. Um, so the first one is a Lenset D um, uh, data set, a small sample data set. The second one is a DM. So this is a three, three band. This is just one band. And then uh, we're going to download the file. So the set like here, this one basically is just the file name, the file pass. And types E L I P. Just look at the file pass. So this is on my computer now under my downloads directory. So you will see here. Um, I have some additional files in here. Let me do this one. So we have the um, lens 7 and also SRTM. Of course, if you want to um, visualize that uh, using desktop uh, GS, you can do that. So I can just quickly show you, for example, the lens data. So this one has uh, three bands. I'm going to open it. It looks weird because uh, the background zero value is like. Uh, treating as background so you can open the sim uh, transparency no data zero you can uncheck it and then hit apply now you see returns no more um, you can also look at the symbology here rgb but it's actually false color composite so the first band is near infrared red band and also green band uh, get the idea this is the image what it looks like it looks pretty nice um, next uh, let's talk about how you want to visualize that um, uh, do the data analysis so what we want to do here, this example, is to compute the NDVI, the normalized difference, uh, difference vegetation index. So we can using raster IO to open the data set. And this one becomes a, 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 a NumPy array. A, a, the um, data, data set, uh, X, uh, raster IO data set. And then we can read the first band. So uh, here, from, this is starting from 1, not from 0. So we do it the first band and then convert it to floating type. Reason for that is because we want to do the uh, divided. Um, so you need to be floating type. Otherwise, it will be 0 and 1. So the first band is the near infrared. The second band is the red band, right? And then we can use near infrared minus red divided by near infrared uh, plus red. Basically, this is the uh, classic NDVI calculation. And after that, you can look at it, right? NDVI, the result right now is a NumPy array here. So you can clearly see all the values uh, between negative one and one. 
So it's a uh, one uh, two dimensional array. So you can just type NDVI doc shape. You can look at the how many rows and how many uh, columns of the image has. And traditionally, if you want to visualize this result, for example, the NDVI, you will have to save this one to your hard drive uh, as a GOT so you can visualize that. But right now with LiveMap, you can actually convert this one into an image in memory, basically uh, convert it to a virtual image. And then you can visualize that easily. So the function is array to image and just passing the input data array, you can press shift tab uh, on your keyboard to bring up the help documentation. So the first one here is the array. Uh, the second one is the output, whether you want to save this one as a physical file or not. If you, if you uh, don't pre uh, provide the output, then it's going to be uh, created an uh, in-memory data set. And in order to be able to overlay the data on the map, because you can think about the, the Excel array, uh, the NumPy array, it doesn't has, um, have any geo-reference information, no coordinate system. So we need to provide those. And where we can provide is the easiest way is to provide this source. Because earlier we used this lens data to do the calculation, we can get all the coordinate information from that. Uh, so the coordinate, for example, the uh, pixel size, um, the projection, something like that. So just simply passing the original data, and then it's going to convert this one to image. So that's one, this one. And uh, if you want, you can look at what it, what's, what's this image, uh, image about. If you run this one, you will see here, this is your uh, raster IO data set. And the name is this one, VSI MEM, so um, virtual data set raster memory. So in the memory, and then you can see the long unique ID here. So this one that is in the memory, it doesn't exist on your physical drive. But now you, we can actually use the leaf map to visualize that here easily. So first create a map and then add raster. So the first one, we're actually adding the original raster. And we're going to uh, use bang one, two, three. Otherwise, you'll be just using the first main. And the no data set to negative one because uh, um, zero actually, uh, because all the water, like all zero, you want to show it. So negative one. Although it doesn't work, I mean, right now it's a bug, but it will be fixed in the future. And then the layer name. So the second one here, this is what this tutorial is about is to visualize this in memory raster. So this one basically visualizing this one. And this one comes from this array to image function. And we also set a color map to green. And if you run it, take a look. So pretty easy. So you see, now we have this NDVI. So the green color rep represent high density uh, vegetation. And you can turn the layer on and off, take a look. Uh, you can also change the opacity, see this, right? So simple and easy. This NDVI right now doesn't exist on your computer. It's in the memory. As I mentioned earlier, if you really want it, you can uh, create a new code block. So here I can run this one again, this map the array to image, and then just passing output, for example, equal to the ndvi.gif. So in this way, it's going to save the file to a computer. So if I resource again, now we have this ndvi.tif. So this one right now is a physical file. And similarly, we can visualize that, right? So I can remove this in memory change it to my local image, it should be the same, right? But the difference is right now, earlier we used the in-memory, right now we're using a physical file. And this can be helpful if you, during the last data set, like gigabyte, gigabyte, it takes like a couple minutes to save the result. And this might be something you want to try out because uh, it's in the memory, it's really, really fast. Okay, so this is the first example. The second example, uh, we're gonna use uh, X-Array. So we're going to use a, a real array to open data set as a data array. So if you run this one, right, we're going to open the DM. So DM only has one band. And this is how many rows, how many columns, right? In total, how many pixels? So you can see uh, the coordinates in here uh, using a, a geographic coordinate system. And you can also see, for example, the name. So this is basically the layer name is elevation, right? So it's a simple one. And what we're going to do here is also a simple example. We're going to select the first band. Right? So basically, I'll select all the elevation uh, um, band out. And then we're going to do the classification, uh, classify this uh, DM into a binary image. We're going to use X array uh, where so this is the conditional statement. So this is DM. 
very uh, elevation ranging from, for example, from zero all the way to 4,000, 5,000, whatever. So what we're doing here is that if the elevation value is less than 2,000, we're going to reclassify the image pixel value into zero. Otherwise, it's one. So essentially, it's, okay, if it's lower than 2,000, it's zero. Greater or equal than 2,000, it's one. So this is going to end up with a binary uh, array. So we can look at the result, right? So this result is an uh, X array, data array, how many rows, how many columns. And then you can look at the value, right? It's supposed to be zero and some are one, right? And again, this is just the memory. Uh, it's not on a computer. So we can do the same thing, leave map dot array to image. And then passing this data array also provide the source. Uh, if you don't, if the source, you can provide the sales size and also the CI uh, EPSG uh, information. Uh, you can also provide the type. Uh, is it floating or is it integer? I mean, how you know compress it? Um, otherwise, you can just provide using the source. It's going to use the same information from the original data. Okay, so run this one again. If you want to see it, you can look at that. Right. So this is the in memory, in mem, uh, in memory raster. After that, we can visualize that. Create a map. Add the original DM. So this is a physical file. This is a in memory file, and you can specify the color map. Run it should be very very fast right so this one right now you're seeing is a binary uh, image that has two classes uh, this is zero this is one you turn the layer on off right and then you can change it so the uh, red color represents higher elevation than 2000 uh, blue one represents lower elevation 2000 so this is how you can uh, visualize that easily again like I mentioned earlier, if you want to save the result to your hard drive, uh, it's also durable. So all we need to do is just pass in, for example, output equal to, you can say, uh, classify dot t, right? And then, so all we need to do is basically uh, do the same thing. You know, remove this in memory. And then, oops, and just paste in here, you should get the same result. Uh, the, but the advantage of using the in memory, like I said, is that you don't have to save the file to your computer. Uh, it saves space. So you can play with your algorithm, get some uh, inspect intermediate results. And once you are satisfied, satisfied with the result, then you can save the file uh, physically. So this is going to save you a lot of time. Like I said, this is an, exci an exciting feature that I uh, have been thinking about. So finally, uh, I was able to make it work. So hopefully, you will find useful in your geospatial uh, Python workflow. I will see you in the next uh, video. Take care. Bye-bye.